What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So AI rendering from SketchUp has been released and in this video we're going to check it out. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so you might have seen this blog post show up on the SketchUp blog a couple days ago now. And basically what it is, is it's a post telling us that they've added a generative AI version of stable diffusion inside of SketchUp. And so what that means is that means that you have the ability to take your models and then create an AI rendering of those models directly inside of SketchUp. So we've talked about a couple different AI features um, for SketchUp before. This is the first one that's come directly from SketchUp. It's technically in SketchUp Labs, meaning that it's still in development. It's kind of like a beta feature, but it's something you can test out and try. And so you could download Diffusion for SketchUp by going into the extension warehouse, and it's probably gonna pop up on your front page right here, but you can just look for SketchUp Diffusion. And so if I click on this, notice how this is going to pop up all the information about this tool from SketchUp Labs. Um, you can download it and give it a try. And so it's really easy to use. If you click on the install button, it's just going to install it right here. You don't need to install anything on your computer or anything like that. As far as I can tell, there don't seem to be any credits or limitations or anything like that on the tool, at least that I've seen so far. So um, I, I think that's nice. You're not having to manage credits or anything like that. But let's go ahead and let's jump over into SketchUp and take a look at what this does. And so with this first model, we're going to use the Cliff of Brick model from Mike Brestel um, as a model that we're going to render out. And so in general, this works like most of the AI tools currently work um, for most 3D softwares. And what I mean by that is you're going to click on this button right here and it's going to pop up a window that's going to look something like this. And so notice how, at least as of right now, it's going to pop up a thumbnail of your image right here. And it's also going to have options for different styles and a text prompt. And so if I click on this, right, if I click on the style, notice how there's a number of different styles contained in here. These are like pre-made or preset styles um, that you can use in order to create a rendering. So in this case right here, let's say I was to select the option for aerial master plan. Um, and then I don't even need to put a prompt in here right now. I can just click on the button to generate. And what that's going to do is that's going to take an image, it's going to upload it to Diffusion, and then it's going to render it based on that prompt that's up above. So you can see the aerial master plan prompts that are in here right now. But it's going to create those images, it's going to download them, and then you can see them down below just like this. And so this is interesting. I mean, it has the same AI issues that you usually run into when you create these AI renderings. Specifically, you don't really have a whole lot of control over the final image, so you can kind of like fine tune them, other things like that. But you can see how what it does is it gives you a few different images down below based on the prompt that's up above. And so say that you don't want this to change your model quite so much, because obviously my building was brick and this building that it's creating is not brick. So you can click into the settings right here and there's an option in here where you can adjust the influence of the prompt, as well as how strongly this respects your model geometry. So I'm gonna bring the prompt influence down and we're gonna bring a respect model geometry up and we're gonna click on generate again. And when we do that, what that's going to do, actually, that might get a little bit weird because I think it's actually uploading this image right here, which is not necessarily what I want. That's the thing about these AI rendering tools is all it's really doing is it's taking a snapshot and then it's generating different images based on that snapshot. Well, notice how as I click in here, um, this is actually rendering out the image that I uploaded. I don't necessarily want that. What I want to do is I want to refresh the input view right here so that I get my SketchUp model back. And then I'm gonna click on the option for generate. And so like even now if I scroll down and I look at some of the images this has created, I'm gonna drag this to the left just so it fits on my screen a little bit better. Notice how it's not necessarily respecting the materials shown in the scene, which has always been, in my opinion, one of the limiting factors of 
AI. And so that's kind of the thing with AI is, so in my opinion, the further down the road you go, the less valuable a tool like this gets. Just because if you're trying to render something out that's very specific, the prompt can definitely make changes to that. Um, and you're seeing that right here where it's not even bringing the brick in anymore. However, let's say that we were to go with another version right here. So maybe we wanted this to be a pencil sketch instead. So I'm gonna refresh my geometry with my current view, which is a slightly different view than I had in here before. Um, and I'm going to maybe set this to halfway here, halfway here, and I'm gonna click on generate. Um, that's going to take this image and it's gonna create a pencil sketch view of this building right here. And I think this is probably going to fit a little bit better what we're going for um, because the pencil sketch is not supposed to show specific materials. Um, it's supposed to take everything and make it look more like a sketch. So now if I click in here, notice how this gives me actually really cool pencil sketch images based on um, the geometry that I've given it. Now, one thing that you can do with this is you can click on the option to add scene. And so when you add a scene, what that's gonna do is that's gonna take this image and it's going to overlay it over top of your SketchUp model right here. And, and so that's actually pretty cool because you can click into this and it kind of overlays it in your SketchUp model. Notice how the model geometry stays very similar. So it's almost like you've got a 3D view in here of the building in that style if we wanted to have that. So you can save those rendered images as different scenes in here. All right, so now let's create an interior. So we're gonna use this living room by Daniel Ong. And I'm just going to download this into SketchUp. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bring this in and we're gonna do that same thing. So we're gonna load the diffusion window right here, but in this case, we're gonna select one of the interior options. So notice how there's an option here for interior photorealistic. So we're just gonna select this option right here and we're going to generate images. And what this is gonna do is this is going to upload this to diffusion, um, create a couple images and then bring them back in. All right, so then if we click in here, we can see this is, that this has created several different versions of this layout with different effects in here. And so this has actually done a pretty good job of creating some pretty decent images. But we can go ahead and we can add this as a scene inside of SketchUp. And so again, the cool thing about this is the way that this is overlaid on our 3D geometry. So you can kind of like um, zoom in, zoom out, other things like that. And one thing that I would note about this is theoretically you could take these and apply them as textures to your model if you found something that you really liked. Now, the thing that I don't necessarily like about this or most of these AI tools is you can't really like go back in and make any changes. So say that I wanted this to be a modern interior living room, stone on walls, photorealistic, foggy, outside windows. Right, so say that I type that in here as, say that I type that in here as my prompt and this went ahead and this rendered that image out. Well, the problem is you can't go back in and change the images that it created. Now you could take them over into Photoshop and make some changes to things like, uh, you could take this into Photoshop and you could make some changes to um, the colors and other things like that but you can't go in, for example, and replace this TV, which is like kind of a second TV in here. Um, you can't go in and say, just remove this and leave the rest of it as is. Now, it does a really interesting job of creating these images, but the limiting factor has always been, well, what if I wanna get rid of this thing in here? Well, you can't necessarily do that right now, so that is kind of a limiting factor, but this is creating some really interesting images in here. Like this one, for example, I think looks really good. As long as you don't look too far into the details, that's um, one of the other limiting factors. But overall, I think this created a really interesting look for how this room could look um, in real life. And so one other thing that's interesting is when you understand the way that this is doing this, um, you could actually use this to use AI on some of your rendered images. Um, because all this is doing is this is just taking an image from inside of SketchUp, right? So I could do a file import and say that I took an image that I created in D5 render, I could actually bring that in as an image like this. 
And you could zoom into it and then you could use SketchUp Diffusion on the actual rendered image that you have in here, right? Because it's basically just taking a snapshot of what's in your viewport. So I could actually stylize this. I could add like clay model or something like that and I could click on generate and this is actually going to generate a clay model version of this image. Even though it's an image, it's never, it's never anything that I actually had in 3D, right? So we could take this whole thing, we could like let it do a little bit of work and you can see that this is this came through and it created clay model versions of this image just like this and you could crank that um, respect model geometry all the way up to make sure that it's not changing your geometry but there are also interesting possibilities of just bringing images directly into SketchUp and using them in this panel right here in order to quickly create renderings. Now one thing I do want to point out that is kind of interesting is this has also been added in SketchUp for iPad and you can actually combine it with sketch mode on SketchUp for iPad so um, if you were to come in there and add a sketch on top of your model and then you were to run that through Diffusion, um, that's actually going to give you the ability to kind of render out the whole thing with the sketch. So I think that is an interesting possibility for being able to visualize what things could look like. Um, so that's definitely something it is there if you're using SketchUp for iPads. You may want to go try that one out because um, I do think that could be a cool tool. So overall, I'm still trying to figure out where AI fits into the landscape moving forward. I think as a tool, um, this inside of SketchUp actually works fine. Um, the images that it's creating, I think it's doing a good job. Limiting factors are the same as they've always been. It doesn't necessarily respect your materials, um, de even depending on what your prompt is, and it's difficult to go back and change the images. But as a tool in your toolbox for doing like early conceptual stuff or visualization, I think it is pretty cool. So I mean, as tools go, I think this is a decent one to use for that. But I think the further you go into your design process, probably the less helpful it gets, at least in my opinion. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this tool in SketchUp or what do you think about AI in general? Um, I just love having that conversation with you guys. I know that's kind of a heated topic, so make sure that you keep it um, civil um, down in the comments, but I'd love to hear what you think. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.